The immense aurora event of prehistory. The squatter man phenomena around the world must be the representation of an immense aurora discharge phenomena. Influenced by its own magnetic field, as shown in the petroglyphs throughout the world. When an intense coronal mass ejection occurs, for example, near the center of the solar disk and its magnetic field is strong and oriented southward, the power of the solar wind magnetosphere generator may exceed known expectations for observable patterns. Simultaneously, the magnetic field produced by the aurora discharge current produces an intense geomagnetic storm ultimately heating Earth's upper atmosphere, and when oxygen atoms collide with heated atoms, the atoms emit a dark red light seen high in the aurora curtain. The aurora curtain is greenish white in color and emitted from atomic oxygen subjected to electrons. One of the basic forms of the aurora is a curtain-like structure that is generally referred to as an aurora arc. When they appear in multiples, each arc consists of several arc elements, which have curtain-like structure. This curtain-like form of the aurora exhibits deformations known as curls, folds, and spirals. Spirals that occur when the Birkeland current peaks are 31 miles in size, have a lifetime of around 10 minutes, and have a clockwise rotational sense. This immense aurora morphologies are a consequence of this instability. The appearance of the aurora borealis and australis are obviously mirrored from the same solar events, but the electrodynamic of the Earth's magnetic sphere, ionosphere, thermosphere system, and the relationship between this phenomenon and the reaction taking place are simply not that well understood at all. So, the meteorological science of the upper atmosphere over the Arctic and Antarctic is a topic of ongoing study. When wind blows over water here on the Earth, we see the phenomena known as the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability. This instability is not only restricted to a water surface as clouds, but is evident through other natural phenomena as the ocean, Saturn's bands, Jupiter's red spot, and the sun's corona, and also in this immense aurora events in space and in Earth's upper atmosphere, in which vortices develop through a fluid when a critical velocity in the flow is exceeded, with a large increase in the resistance to flow. This generates a circular observation as immortalized all around the world by the same observers who documented the zenith pinch squatter man. The circular pattern represents the Birkeland currents, as many as 56 and as little 4, with 4 being the minimum number of Birkeland currents possible after a cycle, and 56 the apparent maximum as observed in modern times. These are electric currents in Earth's ionosphere as recorded in prehistory by ancient Earth inhabitants. Wait till you hear this. The petroglyphs found in abundance at the Columbia River region in North America are simply sensational because they appear to show aurora plasma phenomena at this location with a very similar representation found over 5,000 miles away in the form of a vase recovered at Nazca in Peru. Nazca, of course, very famous for the so-called Nazca lines, known as geoglyphs, which is an ancient Greek word meaning earth ground engraved, not always literal when considering the effort to cross mountains and other rugged terrains to keep the glyphs straight, especially at Nazca. According to Anthony Peratt, within the region containing the lines, there is a high ground blinder gap with elevations rising to the south and the range defining the gap rises abruptly at the westernmost boundary of the lines, while the easternmost lines end where the planet meet east-west hills and a mountain range to the south. If they were documenting the aurora event, then they had the same blinders the petroglyph observers had and they were sheltering in this region. The famous landing strips are representations of the current-like Birkeline currents as viewed in prehistory. 
highly focused sharp edge synchrotron light from the relativistic mega atmosphere electrons would have produced white light images of the filaments on the ground visible even in daylight. Vertical striped petroglyphs or vertical white striped petrographs are found worldwide. For example, white striped petrographs are common to Australia from the Northern Territory to the Flinders Range. One of the better known pictographs occurring often in mythology are the striped lightning brothers, which can be replicated by looking nearly straight into the plasma columns with the Birkeland currents incoming towards Antarctica, making up the torsos of the figures. The dark stripe running vertically in the figures toward the nose is the dense central region of the plasma column. Ancient earthlings in deep prehistory did witness and record the effects and images from an intense solar outburst lasting millennia. And this can be deduced by the records that have endured the ages. For the most part, very little changed, but over the millennia, these representations have completely lost their meaning. However, thanks to lifelong research by the Anthony Peratz of the world, these anomalies are beginning to be corrected and the work will prevail for centuries to come. Explained by Anthony is the fact that when you have a thin plasma column, it filaments into 56 individual columns respectfully, known as the 56 Birkeland currents. Regardless of size and as they develop into vortexes forming a cylinder, they get larger each time with the 56 currents ending up as four at the end of the cycle as proven by supercomputer simulations. 56 at its thinnest at the beginning of the peak of the cycle, four at its fattest at the end of the cycle. But why is this important and what does it mean for us? Well, if you look at petroglyphs or geoglyphs around the world for that matter, you come up with astounding results. Formed by ancient earthlings as documented at these locations are the events they witnessed in the sky, recreated in modern times by supercomputer simulations and now realized to have actually occurred all around the world with a vantage observation of the magnetic south pole are the representations in locations like the Navajo Reservation in Arizona where the seal of the Navajo Nation also confirms the 56 filaments. And this is repeated 8,800 miles away from Arizona in Australia at the location of the Wanjina Gorge where we again see no fewer than 56 rays of filaments radiating outward as seen in the ancient electric skies of our planet. The exact precision at these distances cannot be ignored any longer. They match up at opposite ends of our planet and this means they all saw the same thing in the sky. Now, what if we were to tell you the famous four o'clock rapids petroglyph on the Columbia River matches up shocking accuracy to the John Day bar glyphs in Oregon. It matches the Australian glyphs and the Arizona Navajo Nation glyphs match up with the connection of the seemingly random 56 rays radiating. The now realized 56 Birkeland filaments and this is repeatedly matching up all across the world, including in Kazakhstan, where again, the 56 rays are depicted. 56, remember, no fewer, no less. Is that just a coincidence? Because in China, the Axis Mundi also shows 56 rays, and these anomalies are matching up to places like the stunning Canela Village in Brazil, where they actually built 56 houses at the end of the 56 rays. The strange thing about these significant anomalies and their relationship to the immense plasma event of prehistory is the fact that they were capable of constructing megalithic monuments that represent the 56 filaments in the curtain Birkeland current. And this is now being realized in the most famous monument in the Northern Hemisphere, Stonehenge. Stonehenge was always there. The Celtics tell us that they were there when they arrived and the modern day Britons are descended from these people. So when the first people of the modern era arrived on the British Isles, it was already there and in a ruined state. 
The age of the structure is unknown, but at this location, a connection to Southern and Northern America and also Australia and Middle Eastern countries, including Kazakhstan, can now be realized. Compensating for the reconstruction of Stonehenge and the moving of the ancient placements to modern positions, but with an open mind regarding these connections across the planet, if you take the pattern of the Navajo petroglyph and overlay it at Stonehenge, something very sensational becomes apparent. The matching up of the outer stones of the Stonehenge arrangement all the way to the inner circle is jaw-dropping. Never before has an explanation of what the ancient monument was has it appeared like this. Is Stonehenge in fact another representation on our planet of the dramatic aurora event as witnessed in prehistory? Are the ancient earthlings warning us of the cycle of this event at this location and can we predict when it might happen again with these megalithic wonders matching petroglyphs across the planet? It took 1,000 years for the 56 radiating filaments to reduce to just four. Comparing the four o'clock rapids to Stonehenge shockingly shows the change the filaments began to go through in its life cycle as this began to reduce over the vast period of time as shown by Anthony Peratt in Laboratory Conditions. It's astonishing. What are you guys thinking about this anyway? Are there possible connections at these locations realized by the hard to ignore 56 filament rays as depicted all over the world? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.